pan pizza. Super simple, gives an amazing crust, and best of all, you don't need any special equipment whatsoever. Well, just a pan and an oven. My name's Philip, let's get cooking some pan pizza. Right, so into my bowl I'm adding 215 grams of room temperature water, followed by eight grams of sea salt, and I'll just give it a quick stir to dissolve the salt. Now this recipe will make two pizzas that fit perfectly into a 24 centimeter or 10 inch pan. Now if your pan's a little bit bigger or smaller, don't stress, it's gonna work just fine. Now the salt is dissolved, I'm adding five grams of dried yeast. Now mine doesn't need activating, but if yours does, then follow the instructions on the packet. Now add 10 grams of olive oil and then straight in with 285 grams of flour. Now I'm using an all-purpose Robin Hood flour. Its protein content is 13%, but for this recipe, protein content isn't so important as the dough is gonna be contained within the pan. Now this just needs a quick mix to bring all of the ingredients together and make sure the dry ingredients have been mixed well with the water. This should take a couple of minutes. Now we're not gonna need this dough, we're gonna let time work its magic. So just cover the bowl well and leave it in the fridge overnight. So here's the dough after 20 hours in the fridge, nice and active and ready to go. Carefully release the dough from the edges of the bowl and gently let it drop out onto the countertop. I don't wanna degas the dough completely, so we just wanna try and work with a really light touch. Using a bench scraper, divide the dough into two. You can definitely do this by eye, but I just can never seem to resist the urge to weigh them, but it's definitely, definitely not necessary. This next step is easiest if you use a bench scraper, as the dough doesn't tend to stick to it as much as it's gonna to stick to your fingers. And again, with a light touch, you wanna to form the dough into a ball by rotating it around and tucking it under itself. And this is gonna work a lot easier if you haven't covered your surface with flour as the bottom of the dough ball will stick to the bench, allowing you to create tension with your scraper. I'm using a cast iron pan and a non-stick pan for this, but you can use any heavy base pan as long as it's relatively non-stick. Give the pan a good coating of olive oil and gently pop the dough into the center and then cover it with a plastic bag. We're gonna leave them to sit out at room temperature for the dough to relax so we can then stretch it out to fit the pans. I left mine covered out of room temp for 30 minutes. Right, so I like to give my hands a quick rub with olive oil and in addition to keeping them silky, soft and smooth, you'll also find the dough doesn't stick to them either. So gently lift the dough out towards the edge of the pan and then gently shape with your fingers until the dough has reached the edge of the pan. Now if the dough has relaxed enough, you should be able to do this in one go. But if you start to feel the dough tighten up a little, then you can just cover it again and leave it for five minutes or so and then give it another go. Once shaped, cover the pan with a plastic bag and this time we're gonna leave it out at room temperature to actually proof. My kitchen's 18 degrees Celsius, that's 65 degrees Fahrenheit, and the dough took one hour to prove. So the sauce is super simple, but you can get creative and put your own twist on it. But I like to use pre-grated plum tomatoes. You could use whole tomatoes that you crush down with your hands or blitz with a machine. But try to make sure they're good quality tomatoes. I just season them with black pepper, sea salt, dried oregano, and a splash of olive oil. And then I grate about half a small clove of garlic in there. And I'll pop this on the stove on a low heat, about one or two, and just leave it for five minutes to let the garlic flavor infuse into the sauce. So the dough has had an hour proofing, and when you touch it gently with your finger, it should feel light and gassy and springy. Now our pan pizza is gonna hold up really well to lots of toppings. And personally, I like to be generous with the sauce and the cheese. Now if your tomatoes are a little bit watery, just cook them down a little bit on the stove so that they're around the same consistency as this. You don't want them too wet and you definitely don't want them too dry either. Try to get the sauce nice and close to the edges of the dough. This is 250 grams of low moisture mozzarella that's been roughly cubed. 
make sure to spread some of that cheese around the edge of the pan so that it creates really nice crispy edges. Now all it needs is a healthy amount of pepperoni. Now cooking a pizza in this way is great because you don't need a baking stone or a baking steel. You just preheat your oven to full for a good half an hour and then when you slide the pizza in, you turn the oven down to 220 degrees Celsius. That's 430 degrees Fahrenheit and it bakes for around 20 minutes. Right, it just needs a quick drizzle of olive oil, some black pepper, sea salt and some dried oregano and we're good to bake. Just make sure you keep an eye on the pizza while it's cooking. So guys, a great little pan pizza there, and you can definitely tell that it's been cooked in a pan as opposed to a baking tray. Got a really nice texture on the base and especially those crispy edges around the side. Well guys, that's it from me today. A huge thank you to you for watching. I'll see you again very soon. Stay tuned.